Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Sayyamay Sally and today, Diola and I are flying so <laughs> Why are you giving me bombastic side eye? <laughs> <laughs> How are you, D? I'm okay. How was your day? I don't need to ask. You look tired. I am tired. I've been actually. yawning all day. Me too. Me like, literally, too. I'm tired. I need to just shut down mm. and sleep. Mm. But I have work to do. I have one deadline I must deliver this night. So oh my goodness. I have to do that work. Yeah. Mm. But mm. I will not be able to sleep well. Wow. I'll be seeing you work in my dream. Wow. <laughs> I still have a couple of days to. Yeah. yeah. We'll be fine. So today, yeah. in partnership with Enough is Enough, as you already know, is our Monday. We'll be. Um, we'll touch on understanding the presidential election petition tribunal in Nigeria. Um, so, Jella, you want to go first? Um, okay, so, um, I mean, Enough is Enough has been doing really, really, really wonderful well with um, this content. So, um, following the dramatic 2023 general elections, Nigerians, you know, of course, shifted their attention to the process of resolving election disputes. Now, of course, we've seen dissatisfied political parties and their candidates filed complaints and um, with the presidential election petition tribunal over the election results, I mean, since the election took place. Uh, now, the presidential election petition tribunal is a specialized legal body established to resolve disputes related to presidential election results in Nigeria. The purpose of the tribunal is to ensure transparency, fairness, and accountability in the electoral process by addressing grievances and allegations of ele election irregularities. Now, the composition of this tribunal, the members are composed of experienced and qualified judges from various levels of the judiciary. They're expected to be impartial. Members are expected to be impartial and unbiased, ensuring a fair hearing for all parties involved. What is it? I mean, what's the process for filing a petition? Eligibility. Aggrieved candidates and political parties may file a petition within 21 days after the winner of the presidential election is declared. And they can file petitions on the ground that, um, on the grounds um, based on various reasons, which includes electoral malpractices, irregularities, or constitutional violations. All right, so I'll just pick on, on the process of the tribunal. It says mm. once the petition is filed, um, the presidential election petition tribunal mm. has 180 days to reach a decision. Yeah. Um, September 16, 2023 was the last day of the 180 days um, period or grace period um, so the judgment was delivered of course as we all know on September 6th mm. 2023 the judgment can be appealed if deemed unsatisfactory I think um, Peter B and um, Atiko, Atiko are yeah. saying that they are going to appeal that judgment mm. um, so the appeal period it says appeal from the decision of the the PEPT um, to the Supreme Court should be filed within 14 days of the date of the decision um, appealed against was delivered. So September 19th would be the last day. So that would be the 14 day period yeah. for the appeal to be filed. Um, so a Supreme Court is required to resolve appeals within 60 days from the date of the presidential election tr uh, petition tribunal that it delivered that judgment. And November 5th, 2023. <laughs> <laughs> the day after my birthday, that's wow. Sansa's birthday actually. Wow. That'll be the last day of the 60 day resolution period. So, once all appeals are resolved, the electoral process is completed. Mm. Um, it's our duty as active citizens to stay informed of the democratic processes, information empowers engagement. So, mm. I mean, to stay in touch, member that you can always meet the people at the office of the citizens chat box you know just say hello to zero one seven zero zero six three eight one 
Um, this will help you to know so many things. Know your officials, your governor, senators, house of representatives, state house of assembly members, local government chairman, and councillor. So, I mean, we do this every Monday in partnership with Enough is Enough because we understand that the biggest gap in our electoral process is not so much, or even the governance structure of the political system, it's not so much of the problem in itself, but there is a very, gap. very huge information gap. And we're happy to be partnering with Enough in the, um, is Enough to bring you this. All right, so we'll just move on quickly to the conversation for today. Um, as you all know, in line with this, um, Enough is Enough, we will be having a very seasoned uh, we call him a friend of the house, mm. someone that is very knowledgeable in the electoral space because we want to discuss the petition. There are allegations around saying that the INEC, they didn't do a good job and we have Kunle Lawal um, to discuss this, but we'll do that much later. Right now, um, National Boss slash Employee Exchange Day is a holiday celebrated in the United States on the Monday after Labor Day. Now, the purpose of the day is to give employees and their managers a chance to swap places for a day by switching roles and responsibilities. Employees and managers can better understand and appreciate the challenges that each day, uh, each other encounter on a daily basis. I wish I did this day. Let me put somebody on my seat. So they'll come <laughs> and bombard you with all the questions and everything. Then me, I'll just sit down and be acting like an entitled employee. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's um, it's a very fun day. It is, and I think that um, it also presents an opportunity to to spot talent. Mm -hmm. You know, you just might be shocked at um, how the how some employees would actually you know manage situations, and that's I think that's very good for it's an opportunity to also um, mentor people, coach people. You know, when you see talents and that they may not necessarily be able to display on daily basis mm -hmm. in the course of their work mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, and they that's might just be better managers I yeah think. That's yeah that's absolutely happy to do that absolutely <laughs> so what did you find for us in the news okay i mean this has been all over um today's um news the one of the foremost or the pioneer um, chartered accountant of Nigeria, Pa Akitsala Williams, dies today at 104. I mean, is um, he's lived such an impactful life, and um, he died in his home. And um, I mean, I I know about this profession. I mean, I've known about him since way back secondary school. I come from a family of accountants, so I mean, Akitsala Williams is. A name. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Name yeah, 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 yeah. And of I, course, I see a lot of people mm, celebrate, but he lived a long yeah, life. Yeah, very long life. He to find people where they pass hundred these days. Yeah, and you know, he founded in 1952. He founded the first indigenous chartered accounting firm in Africa, which is Akintola Williams and Company. I mean, and um, they've done so well. He's, he's he was also the first president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. He's lived well, he's lived, let me, I mean, we can't even talk the accounting profession today without mentioning people like that. So yes, we're grateful. So it's interesting, I want to ask yeah. a question. For people like this, mm. right, what would make sense in terms of legacy? Shouldn't we have like, you know, like in Harvard, mm. take on people. Mm. You know, and they take on case studies. So, for instance, in the accounting, I don't know, if we need mm. to ask mm. people studying accounting in Nigeria, mm. if he is one of like their like case studies scenarios and all of that that they use, you know, to be able to. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very I'm sure very that, yeah, I'm very sure maybe because um, I know that, um, of course, that different subjects, you know, while writing your professional exams, there is the multidisciplinary case study where you are presented with a case scenario and you're supposed to be able to make informed decisions, you know, based on your financial knowledge, financial reporting and all that. So I'm sure that um, over time, you know, there would have been... Um, cases that um, would have been attributed to him based on maybe how he's handled a controversial case or he's 
thoughts about certain policies or certain um, accounting standards you know so I think, I think oh yeah absolutely good. yeah absolutely so, absolutely uh, my heart goes out to the family yeah right, so i just want to quickly mention my nigerian secret service mm. the ss and um i mean over the weekend there was just you know i actually stayed away from social media mm. this weekend because i had too many things to do so i didn't really check what was going on but i just found out that um aisha ahmed she was arrested um by the dss um they, they grilled her um so according to the report, um, they arrested her and detained her, and they were grilling her in a charge of financial system. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, the Central Bank of Nigeria in charge of the financial system. She's in charge of financial system stability. Then according to NTA, and of course it was on X, mm. um, she was arrested and detained over the Ill alleged fraudulent acquisition of shares in Polaris Bank, Titan Bank, slash Union Bank. So um, the report added that CBN Deputy Governor is currently being interrogated on how the $300 million uh, to complete acquisition of Union Bank was raised by Titan Bank. Uh, her, um, her arrest and grilling followed the arrest and detention, of course, of her boss, the um, CBN Governor himself, Godwin Emefiele. She was arrested on the 23rd. Well, he was arrested on the 23rd of March. So, I mean, um, I've said this argument several times, but people have come countering the argument and argument and argument. I keep on saying that these guys were under somebody's authority. Hmm. Why would you be arresting them? It's just like for me now in my company, if my staff goes ahead to do something, I must have authorized it. So that's why I must be very careful whatever we put out and all of that. So hmm. shouldn't there be some level of, okay, who was in charge? And you know, but they say they are supposed to be an independent body. Mm. The the president just gives the uh, signs off on some things. Then they are the ones that are the ones that implement. You understand? So implementation is where some of these irregularities happen. Mm. So I leave the argument for the people to. But why is she okay? Because she it, it's a department. Oh, okay. So, All, right. Mm. All right. So we will take a break now. Let's discuss the election tribunal result. <laughs> It's Monday, we don't have a choice. Yeah. So we'll be right back.